we are going to try to convert some of the uh, power necessary for um, various parts of my telescope to uh, be native 12 volt DC. They all come with power bricks or different types of cabling and I'd like to remove all those bricks. So I'm going to try to teach you how to do that today. Um, you can see that I've already got some of this converted. We're going to show you how to use these uh, Johnson power poles uh, connectors. Uh, there's a power pole connector block there and I've got a couple things run into it. Um, I've already got my dew heater run into it, a USB um, hub run into it. Uh, my mount is already run into it. And then actually if I back out here and go down, you'll see I actually have a computer here as well and I've converted that um, to be power pole connectors as well. So it's just 12 volt DC native. So what you'll see um, that we'll get to here shortly in the video is um, I'm actually running um, another distribution block here for the power poles that is um, something that actually already has fuses on it. Um, it's a little bit of overkill. I like it because when it's on, it gives me a readout telling me uh, how many amps I'm drawing, which is really helpful to monitor over time so that when I do take this in the field and plug directly into my 12 volt battery box, um, I know exactly what the draw is. I know, you know how long my battery is gonna last. And then right here we have a 12 volt um, power supply. So I have a single uh, power supply I plug into my 110 outlet when I'm at home and it just comes out of there. Uh, 12 volt DC power pole connectors and then powers the rest of my rig. Okay, so here's some of what I'm going to convert. You can see my ASI 1600mm Pro camera on the back has a 12 volt uh, power supply input uh, DC and on the upper right I have my uh, Pegasus Astro uh, Focus Cube 2 which also requires 12 volt DC power. So I'm actually gonna cable that up um, so that I can run that off the distribution block. And again, get rid of both of the bricks. There's no need for me to have a brick and a bunch of extension cords. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, now we've had a look at the telescope and our needs. Uh, what we're gonna do is go ahead and make the cable uh, that we need. So it's basically sort of a Y splitter cable. Um, and we're gonna replace two power bricks. So you're all very familiar with the standard power bricks uh, that you get. You have these hanging off the telescope and you know, you'll plug this into your, your 110 um, outlet. Um, you get numbers of these and they start to pile up. Some of your gear may even come with something like this, right? The typical cigarette lighter adapter and you get this and you're looking at it when you first buy your telescope and you say, great, what am I gonna do with this, right? I guess I need to pull my car up into the backyard uh, so that I can actually power my telescope. Um, and the reason is quite simple is that it, it's sort of expected that uh, at some point you're going to run your telescope um, not near a 110 uh, outlet, right? So uh, everything for the most part is, is 12 volt DC. So um, it comes prepared for that. And if you've looked at many of the the Telescope manufacturers, they have their own power banks they tend to put out, or there's a number of power banks out there, and a lot of them have these um, cigarette lighter adapters. Now, uh, most people hate these, and, and I'm definitely in that camp. Um, the problem you have is that when you do plug this in, you push it in tight, and it sits there, but it does not take much at all for this to back out and lose power, right? So these connectors very, very easily, they seat in there and then it only takes one little snag for it to come loose or just back out just enough to lose contact with the center position there. So again, I like to convert these as well to something that is going to uh, stick a little, bit, a little bit better. And then again, outside of that, just getting rid of all these power bricks, right? Um, now, it's not to say that you're not going to need uh, 110 AC power, right? So what we'll do is we'll actually purchase one of these or something like this. Uh, and what we actually have here is a uh, 110 or 220 switching um, input AC adapter. You can see it has Johnson power pole connectors um, on the front, right? So 
we've got a lot of options here. Um, there's a number of manufacturers of these uh, that you can uh, that you can get your hands on. And, and what I tend to do is put one of these with my telescope. So once I've converted everything to 12 volt DC, I just run down into one of these natively. And then again, when I go out in the field, um, I don't need this. What I do is I just bring my battery box and I plug everything in native 12 volt DC to the 12 volt battery, right? So um, again, just it, converting it is gonna make your life easier down the road and it's gonna make everything a little bit more stable. You're not gonna end up with weird balance issues with these things hanging off of your uh, telescope. So um, the first thing is know that you can purchase more of these. So if you're not comfortable, doing this and you think you're going to ruin uh, your power supply, it, it's always possible that you do something wrong if you've never done a project that, like this before, but the reality is um, you can buy more of these, right? So don't be afraid. It's something you can do. Um, you, can, you can always buy, buy a replacement part, whether it's the manufacturer's part or third party. Um, there's a lot of them out there. Uh, now, as far as conversions, if you're not comfortable cutting your power bricks and losing these power bricks forever once you cut the wire, you can buy multi-packs of these terminal ends. And again, I'll put links to all of this in the description. Um, I did a basic tools video where I covered some of this already, uh, but you know, for, for um, uh, the specifics of going over this for my telescope, I just figured I'd do this video here and show you actually cutting into some of these adapters and, and converting some of the more common ones. Um, so again, you can buy these multi-packs and the multi-packs are, you know, what is that, maybe 16, 18 inches. Um, that may or may not be long enough. The other problem you may have is that these wires are uh, pretty thin. Um, so while I have not had a problem with a wire like this yet, um, I would prefer uh, the leads to be a little bit a little bit thicker, but you do have these options So you can go ahead and buy these and just give this a shot without cutting into your your power bricks um, Always remember uh, when you're creating these cables uh, You have a tendency to cut them to length and that is a good thing You want to cut them to length you want to minimize the opportunity for snag to occur um, when the telescope is slewing throughout the evening but don't forget that you're potentially gonna change things over time. You may need to, uh, maybe you wanna do planetary. And when you do planetary, maybe you need a little bit more uh, back focus because you're dropping a bar low in there, right? Uh, maybe you want to rotate your camera, right? And as you're rotating your camera, you may find you're rotating your filter wheel and your filter wheel, if it's powered, probably is a, a little bit further away than it, it once was. Uh, so you can get the framing for a mosaic or something like that. So always give yourself a little more slack because of that, even though I could go a lot shorter, um, while I'm not gonna use these particular cables very likely, um, I am gonna go to about this length and I'm just gonna have myself a little bit of slack, right, in the mix. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, first thing you always need to check when you are working with your power supply is check the power supply you got and understand your equipment. Um, almost always uh, will have something that's center positive. Um, I'll try to put an image on the screen um, so you can see this, but uh, and there's a diagram that'll tell you that. So we're gonna look for something that's center positive. Now, um, I wanna get rid of this brick and I know that my length is basically the length of this previous uh, cable I showed you. So let's go ahead and stretch that out to about length. And this is the part where everyone gets scared. Um, I'll put links to these tools as well if you're not familiar with them, but we'll go ahead and we're gonna cut this cable. So we go ahead and cut it off. And now your power brick is, you know, more or less trash, but that's okay. We didn't want it anyway. Now we've got this cut to length. We've got the piece we need. Um, and if it was the manufacturer's cable, you know, we'd be pretty happy um, that it was, you know, of the right quality, right, and caliber cable. So what we're gonna do is use our strippers um, to uh, strip this back. So we're gonna go ahead and feed it in. Now I'm gonna make it a little bit long at the beginning here um, to get the sheath off. And we're gonna go ahead and pull that sheath back. Um, again, if you haven't done this before, you can look at the tools video. Um, and this has exposed a red and black wire, right? So we've got the red and black wire here. Now, uh, typically you would trust that a red is positive and the black is negative, but 
we may not trust that. So we're gonna check it. And I suggest you do this 100% of the time. And um, you know, last thing I wanna do is, is fry my nice camera. So we're gonna go ahead and do um, our toner uh, multimeter, and we're gonna use it for toning capability right now. And there is an icon on here um, that will be for toning. Hopefully I can get that to come in focus. So you'll see a little, um, little icon there that looks like a, a, an audible tone. So we'll go ahead and, and switch it to that. And what we'll do here is, now we have a, a red and black lead, that really doesn't matter for what we're doing right now. Um, all I wanna do is a continuity test, right? So when I'm looking at continuity, what I'm saying is if, if this completes the circuit, I should hear a tone. So I touch it, I hear a tone. So because I know that this power supply that I'm trying to convert was center positive, I'm gonna actually take one of the leads and go down into the center of that plug. So it's down in the middle, right? And I'm gonna take the other one, and if it was center positive, I would expect black to do nothing. So when I touch the other lead to the black end uh, of the copper cable, um, I get absolutely nothing, right? Pretty straightforward. Now, if I go to the red without touching anything else, I get a tone. So this is center positive, right? I'm on the red over here and I'm center pin over here. Now, what if I wanna verify uh, that the outside of the barrel connector is the negative? I just simply hold it against that and touch the black and I've got it, right? So I have confirmed that this particular cable that I cut off my adapter is center positive and that I know that my red on that end is positive as I would expect it. So now I can just put my, um, my ends on here, right? Well, not quite yet because of how I wanna convert this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my second adapter um, and I'm gonna go ahead and put it all into one um, one connector, one power pole connector to keep it clean so that I don't have to build any additional Y cables. So let's make this one the same length. Um, it, it may be that you wanna do different lengths. Um, this is actually a completely different cable, completely different power supply, different manufacturer. So let's go ahead and uh, cut this one. Again, another piece of trash, another brick that we are happy to get rid of. I will just simply pull this back, get the sheath off there. And again, you never know what you're gonna get, but this one looks pretty straightforward as well. We've got red and black. We'll go ahead and strip those back. And quick quiz, do we trust it? Absolutely not. We'll go ahead and take them, spin them free. And we do have red and black, but what are we gonna do? We're gonna test continuity. So again, I don't care what end I put where. Um, I'm gonna put, in this case, the black in the center. It doesn't really matter. Center positive means red should make a tone, and it does, black does not. And just to verify, if I go on the outside of the barrel connector, if I go to black, get a tone, red does not. So exactly as I would expect. So, perfect, another center positive cable and it was actually color coded correctly. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and um, put this in uh, power pole connectors. Now you may choose just to simply wrap these together. Um, if you're comfortable with it, you may solder this. Uh, you could put it in all different types of connector. You can, um, connectors, uh, you can do uh, heat shrink. There's a lot of options you have here uh, to join this up. Um, in this particular case, um, I think all I'm going to do is um, join these with power pole so I have a little bit more flexibility in plugging and unplugging on the fly. Um, and then we'll make another extension from here that runs um, to uh, where it needs to get to get the power. So what I'm gonna do here is I am gonna actually join these reds together. And then I'm going to spin and join these uh, black wires together as well. Now I'm gonna do one additional thing, right? So um, there could be some tugging on this eventually. 
Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use some heat shrink. Uh, don't feel like you have to do this if you haven't used uh, heat shrink before. Um, you know, you, you can use it if you want. Uh, don't feel like you have to. But uh, the reason I bring it up now is that um, I have to get this heat shrink um, component on there before I put the adapter on. Um, and actually this is a lot more heat shrink than I would like. And I'm going to slide that um, all the way on um, and out of the way for now. So again, what do I have? I've got some black wires and some red wires. I'm gonna go ahead and use my crimp tool to crimp down on this. Black, so I've got red and black. And then it should be as easy as getting Again, my red and black power pole connectors together. I should just be able to push these in and you should hear that click. Took a little bit longer occasionally, uh, depending on how short you trim the cables. It can be a little bit of a challenge. So now we've got them wired up. And we are going to use our heat shrink. And uh, you can use a heat gun. Um, I'm actually gonna use this uh, butane torch to do that. Kind of hold it off to the side here, out of the way. Again, only use fire or electricity if you're comfortable doing so. Um, that could even be a little bit tighter, but that's good the heat shrink came down. So we can see we now have an end, uh, a little Y cable that has our adapter on it. So now it really, more or less, is as easy as taking this, plugging this into the end of our telescope components, and then um, connecting this to our power source, completed extension cable, right? So um, I've made it to length, we've got power pole connectors on both sides, and um, it's really, at this point now, as easy as connecting um, red to red and black to black. You can see they're connected. Now I do want to show other, uh, and one other thing here I didn't mention in my previous videos. Um, they do make these small um, locking pins that you can use. Um, you don't need them. Uh, these actually stay pretty good. I mean, you can tug on them and they come apart, but uh, they are under a little bit of pressure, so they don't come out anywhere as easy as a cigarette lighter adapter. But with these locking pins, you can fit them in uh, across the two holes and now they cannot go anywhere, right? So um, it, it does make it a little bit stronger if there's something you want to ensure doesn't come out um, easily, right? I mean, I can pull these pins out, this locking pin out, and then certainly still remove it. But, you know, what have I done? I've removed two power bricks that used to be hanging from my telescope. Um, I've replaced it with just the length of cables that I care about. Um, in this particular case, I opted to build an extension cable from where I joined these two barrel connector ends. And then I'll just simply run this um, again back to um, a, a, a connector block that I had mounted uh, that you saw earlier. So I've got a connector block, this will just run back down. But again, think about it, right? I've removed all of this extra weight from my mount, uh, everything that could be hanging. Uh, it's two more AC uh, power cords that I don't need to uh, plug in. I don't need that, you know, that extra um, uh, power strip or whatever these were plugged into before. And again, just all this extra weight. Now I do need AC power at some point. So even though I did convert it, um, if I'm in the field, I can again connect this to my battery at 12 volt natively and I have no need for anything else. But the reality is that you are still gonna replace those bricks with something like this. And again, it doesn't have to be this big, uh, but this will run me, you know, depending on the model, you get 30, 40, 50, 60 amps. You're not gonna need anywhere near that. Um, but this gives me the ability to connect again back to my power supply here and this will power my entire rig, right? So uh, very easy to use, uh, very clean. This just sits at the base of my, um, of my telescope, right? 
Um, I actually have mine mounted on wheels, so I just set it down there and I run one power cord out to that box and then everything else is then coming out of here, 12 volt DC, so nice and clean. What I'm gonna do is show you how to work with a, um, uh, one of these cigarette lighter adapters. So what we have here with a cigarette lighter adapter is we can go back to our continuity test. And what we're gonna do is again, we're gonna go to center positive. Now in this particular case with these adapters, center positive is still center and on this end, center of the barrel connector, right? So I'm gonna go center of the barrel connector and then I am going to go center. And we have tone and notice we don't have anything here on the outsides. Now, if I wanna test the outsides, I will hold the outside of the barrel connector and I'm gonna to go to the outside. And notice we have a tone out here, nothing on center. So again, these are also center positive. So it's really easy to remember when you're working with these uh, DC connectors when something is center positive. A couple things to think about if you're going to do this. 12 volt DC, if you're gonna convert everything to 12 volt DC, um, or you'd like to clean up as much as possible, make sure the components you get are 12 volt DC. So um, almost definitely your focusers will be 12 volt DC if it even needs power. Some of the newer ones um, just you power off USB directly. Uh, your cameras should be 12 volt DC, so that should be pretty easy. Um, your dew heater, uh, in many cases, the uh, powering unit will be 12 volt DC. You can convert that as well. A lot of those come natively with um, the cigarette lighter adapter kind of connector. You can just cut that off um, and uh, uh, make sure that you, you connect the right cables to the right places. Um, in that particular case, um, you don't have a barrel connector on the other end. So when you cut that end, when you cut the cigarette lighter adapter off something like uh, a dew heater where the other end doesn't have a barrel connector, it just goes right into the unit and disappears, you're not sure what positive and negative is. Once you cut this end off, again, just tone this end out, right? So I can just simply take the end I removed, put my pin on the middle, and then figure out what line is center positive, right? So again, before you throw this piece away, if you, you may need it to uh, understand the cabling um, that you've cut off that you need to terminate, right? Because again, it's not as always as easy as red and black wires. Um, I did it here and I made sure I had these for illustration purposes, but it could have been uh, black and black with a white stripe, right? So um, one way to know what it is, is to uh, make sure you can tone these out. A multimeter will be very, very handy. Uh, for that purpose. Um, so uh, 12 volt DC for that. Um, USB, uh, powered USB is something that, that we all like to use when we talk astrophotography um, to make sure we have enough power going to the devices we're trying to power with USB. Uh, we need, in many cases, more than an amp. So a powered USB hub, um, if you wanna convert that, make sure you find one that comes uh, with a 12 volt uh, power supply. There's a lot of just five volt out there. So um, again, you're not gonna wanna plug five volt into 12 volt. You're gonna have a big problem, right? Uh, you wanna go 12 volt to 12 volt. So make sure you find a USB hub that is a, a 12 volt uh, input. And uh, again, you can simply cut those wires and convert those. It'll be another barrel connector and probably a little power brick. Um, same thing with your mount. The mount is almost definitely 12 volt DC. Um, Again, you can always buy a backup cable. Um, if you're paranoid about it, you can buy the cable even before you cut it. Make sure you've got one that works and, and one that you might destroy. Um, but, uh, but again, it, none of this is something you can't replace. It's just the time waiting for the replacement to come back in. And in all my years of doing this and remaking cables and doing it for different mounts, um, I really haven't had a problem. Uh, same thing with your... Um, uh, computer, if you're gonna put a computer with the rig, uh, check the power supply. Now I will say most laptops are not gonna be 12 volt. They're gonna be some different type of voltage, something coming out of there. It's gonna be 110 into the brick, but it could be some strange voltage uh, that goes into, into your uh, laptop. So you may not be able to convert your laptop, uh, but again, your laptop has a battery. Just charge that before you go into the field or you can get a power converter or something for that. 
Uh, but the, the computers I put on my rig uh, that I keep there so I can remote control them from inside the house, I always make sure those are 12 volts so I can cut that brick off as well and I just run that natively. And again, I can take that um, and run that, that straight off my battery. The one last thing I do wanna mention about all this is that just because you have power bricks that say that they are 12 volt, six amp and 12 volt, five amp, um, and your devices say that they need 12 volt, six amp, 12 volt, five amp, or whatever they happen to be, uh, what you will notice is if you get yourself a, um, a power meter like this, um, and again, I'll put this link in the description, something similar anyway, uh, you can put power pole connectors um, on something like this, the Johnson power pole connectors, and uh, basically you run off your power supply from the source, and then out the load side, I'll plug my gear in and I can see what I'm drawing. The reality is, you know, if I took all the power bricks, you know, theoretically, I would need 20 plus uh, 12 volt DC amps, right? So I need 20 plus amps to power everything. The reality is, even with my new heaters running, um, I'm running somewhere between six and eight, um, maybe up to nine um, amps. Uh, if I'm if I'm really running everything and I've got everything connected everything plugged in and I'm you know again running the, the all the do stri uh, do heater strips as well So just because it says 12 volt 6 amps I'm not saying undersize everything But I am saying uh, don't just do the math and add it all up and think you're gonna need this enormous 12 volt battery to power everything The reality is your real draw will be nowhere near that so um, again, you know, uh, I'll take a picture once I've got this connected, but um, hopefully this helps just alleviate some of the fear. That was really my goal here, not to show you me wiring everything up, uh, but just to make sure you understood you don't have to be afraid of it, right? You don't have to be afraid to cut these um, and convert them. If you're not comfortable with working with power, certainly don't do that. Don't use the butane tor torch. Um, if you don't wanna do that part, that's fine. Um, it's not something everyone has to do, uh, but it is something that, that people are capable of doing uh, from a conversion um, standpoint. So again, do it at your own risk, but the reality is um, if you look on the forums, you look online, uh, there's quite a few people doing this. This is not unusual. Uh, people do it in the telescope market, uh, you'll see it quite a bit um, in the ice fishing uh, industry. They take batteries out to the field all the time. Uh, you'll see it um, on um, a lot of other uh, places as well. C certainly the shortwave radio guys um, are using 12 volt DC quite a bit and, and, and making battery boxes and converting and using Johnson power pole connectors. So this isn't anything new. It's not anything that you can't find a little more information about. Um, but again, don't be afraid of it. Uh, and it's, it's something that you should feel confident that you can do. There'll be more videos to come. Uh, if you have any suggestions, let me know. And, um, you know, please feel free to watch some of the other videos. I've got a number of other interesting videos that I'll try to get up on the screen here. And uh, hopefully, you know, um, you'll subscribe and come back and I'll have a lot more content. I hope to have uh, a lot more content related to um, the processing side of astrophotography. A lot of the imaging I do, the solar imaging as well.